Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make sabudana vada, which is made using potatoes and tapioca pearls. And these vadas come out so good and crispy. My sister-in-law in Orlando, Vaishali, recently showed me how to make these when I was visiting her. And really, they're out of this world. In addition, she also showed me how to make a chutney that goes with it. So I'm going to show you that today too. Let's get cooking. The first thing we'll do is take one and a quarter cup of sabudana or the tapioca pearl. And for this recipe, I use the medium sized tapioca pearls. We're going to just rinse them carefully and then soak them in hot to warm water for three to four hours. You'll know when it's done when you press it through your fingers and it's pretty soft. Then after the soaking period, if there's too much water in there or you feel there's some water in there, go ahead and drain it and keep it aside. In the meantime, you can boil your potatoes. So I have 500 grams of white potatoes and I'm going to put it on a steamer rack and pressure cook it for 25 minutes or you can put it in your instant pot and steam them for 25 to 30 minutes on a high pressure. Then let them cool down on a plate and then once they're cooled, go ahead and peel them. And when you're peeling your potatoes, make sure you take out any eyes like this that you see in there because you want your potatoes to be really clean. Now that my potatoes are ready and my tapioca starch balls are totally soaked and nice and soft, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my potato ricer to rice the potatoes into here. Now, if you don't have one of these ricers, I definitely recommend you get one because it just makes the best and smoothest mashed potato. And I've got a link to this on my website so you can check that out. So we're just going to mash these or rice these in to the tapioca starch and it's very, very easy. I tell you, once you have one of these ricers, you'll never go back to mashing potatoes with a potato masher. Then I'm gonna get ready to add the rest of the ingredients to this before I mix it up because when you mix up mashed potatoes, if you over mix it, it becomes really gluey. So you just wanna leave it there and get the rest of the ingredients ready. So you're going to need a quarter cup of chopped coriander. So I'm going to add the coriander to the mix and that was a lightly packed quarter cup of coriander. You can add more or less if you like. I have a quarter cup of grated coconut here and this was frozen previously. So I'm going to add that and this is optional. If you don't like coconut, you don't need to add it in there. I'm going to add two teaspoons of grated ginger in here. I have the juice of half a lime here and I'm gonna add that in there. And I have probably five green chilies here which I'm just going to grind into the mix. I'll add a half a teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt and I'm using sea salt here. You can use whichever salt. If you're fasting, you can use rock salt or the fasting salt and add less salt if you want less salt in there. Now to add some crunch and texture to these varas, we're going to roast up some peanuts. So these are raw peanuts and I've got a half a cup here and I'm just gonna dry roast them in the pan. I'm gonna let them cool completely and then the skin will just peel off. So while these are roasting, just go ahead and shake the pan to move them around so that they don't burn on any side. And you just wanna make sure they're toasted nicely, not charred in any way, but they really should be heated through. 
Now to check if they're done just pick one up, one that doesn't look overly cooked and be careful because it will be hot and just try and see if the skin will come off and you can see it's coming off. So now I'm going to turn off the heat and just let them cool down and then remove the skin off of all of them. Now that the nuts are cooled, I can take their skin off easily. So I like to leave the skin in the plate and just put the clean nuts into a bowl. So here are my nuts and there's a couple with a little bit of skin on that I had some trouble getting off and it's not a huge deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in my pestle and mortar and I'm just going to crush them very lightly. We want them pretty coarse. All right, so that looks good. You can see that I've got some halves in there which is nice for some crunch and I can smell the aroma because they've been nicely toasted so I'm going to add these to my mix. Then I just need to mix this all together. I'm not going to mash it together and scrunch my hands. We're going to gently mix it to make sure all the ingredients are evenly distributed. Then go ahead and taste it and see if you need to adjust any of the seasonings. Maybe add more chilies or salt or lime juice or whatever you want to add. I am going to add a touch of salt and some more lime in here. Now the vada mix should have just enough flavor so that you can taste the acidity, the salt, and a very slight heat. They're not supposed to be ultra spicy because that's what the chutney is for and I'll show you in a little bit how to make that too. So now we're going to get ready to shape these radas and what we're going to do is we're going to shape them and put them in the refrigerator because when they are cooled down and then you fry them, they'll come out even more crispy. Now to shape the vara, I recommend you use a mashed potato scoop like this one. And this is a medium size, it's not very big, so it's actually the perfect size. I've got these on my website, so check that out. So we're going to take one flat scoop of the mixture and put it onto a plate. And we're just going to make this until we're done with all of the mix. I ended up with 24 balls here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to oil my hands and then take each ball and then roll it and slightly flatten it to shape it. When you oil your hands it helps the water from sticking to your hands otherwise they can be quite sticky. And if they felt a little bit sticky while you were rolling them, don't worry. You can put them in the fridge and then just reshape them afterwards. It's totally fine. If you want to fry them up right now and eat them, that's fine too. But trust me, they're so much better once they're refrigerated and then fried. So we're just going to cover these with some cling film and put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm just joking. It wasn't that hard, honestly. Now that that's done, I'm going to show you how to make some coriander chutney to go with these delicious varas. So I have about a half a bunch of coriander here and I'm going to chop it very coarsely and measure it because as you all know, the bunches in the shops vary so much. Sometimes you get a really nice bunch and sometimes it's not so big. So you can definitely add the stems in here and this coriander I've washed and I've spun dry. So I'm just going to pop it in here just to let you guys know how much I have. And it looks like it's about two cups loosely packed. So that's how much coriander you need to use for this recipe. So I'm going to put the two cups of 
coarsely chopped coriander into my Blendtec blender and I absolutely love this blender. I use it for everything. I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of chopped ginger to this and some green chilies. So these are just frozen green chilies that I've defrosted. I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice. I'll add more later if I want to, if I think it's not sour enough. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of sugar to this, a quarter teaspoon of cumin powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to add a handful of sel in here. You can add daria or gatia or anything like that made with chickpea flour because this will help to thicken it up a little bit. So just a little bit in there. And one final thing to add is some ice cubes. So I'm going to add two small ice cubes in here. Now why add ice cubes you might be asking? Well this is a tip that my, one of my sister-in-laws gave when I went to Orlando. They put ice cubes when they're making chutney because the blender blends so fast that sometimes it creates heat and heat makes the chutney go brown. So if you add ice cubes it keeps it cool. So there's a tip for you. And then I'm just going to blend it on the dip setting in my Blendtec. And then go ahead and taste it. Hmm. I'm gonna need some more salt in here and some more lemon juice. So adjust the seasonings to how you like it. I'm gonna add another half a teaspoon of lemon juice and just a little bit more salt. So that's about an eighth of a teaspoon more salt in here. I'm going to add a touch of ginger as well. All right. Mmm, good. So this recipe only makes a small amount of chutney, not a huge amount, and chutney is always best fresh. So if you need more chutney, just go ahead and multiply the recipe. And this chutney goes very well with the waras because it's got ginger in it instead of garlic. I've got another recipe on my website that has garlic in the chutney. It's very similar to this, so definitely check that out too. So you can see how nice and green the chutney is. So I really hope you guys are enjoying the tips that we're bringing you. And I say we because I have a lot of different chefs that are helping me give you all the tips that we know so that you can really enjoy cooking. And if you are enjoying these videos, then definitely give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So it's a couple of hours later and my varas are nice and cold so I'm just going to get ready to fry them. So I'm using sunflower oil here and I'm just going to put some oil into my pan and I'm going to heat it up until it's hot but not smoking hot. So I've got my oil going on a medium heat and I've got my plate lined with some paper towels. I've got my slotted spoon and to fry these I'm also using a fork just to make it easier to turn them while frying. And I think my oil is ready. So I'm just going to get one of the varas and I'm just going to put a tiny piece in there. Oh yeah that's ready. So I'm gently going to place it in there. So you can see that some of the tapioca has stuck to my fork because I tried to move them around as soon as they got in there and that, that happens so it's best to leave them in there for a little while. And you can see now how nice and golden they're turning. So now I'm going to try and separate them and turn them around.
and this looks like there's quite a lot of oil in here so if you think there's too much oil you can go ahead and spoon it out into another pan with a big spoon so when they start looking nice and golden like this you can get ready to remove them onto your paper towel and then carefully add some more and if you can try and keep them separate so that they don't stick together so it definitely works keeping them separate as you place them inside the frying pan because they're not sticking together now so that's something that I've learned while I'm frying them. And you see how the bubbles are bubbling right now? It's on a medium heat on my stove that's a number five and that's how you want to fry them so that they don't burn on the outside. You want them nice and golden and crisp on the outside. And there you have it, delicious and golden and crispy sabudanawala along with this spicy and fragrant coriander chutney. Thank you Vaishali so much for sharing your recipe with us. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And you're probably wondering about the taste test. Well, I'm taking you to Orlando for that. I'll see you all soon for some more cooking inspiration. Wow, these look amazing. I'm going to try one. Mmm, so good and crunchy and really nice and soft and tasty inside. Thank you so much for teaching us. You're very welcome. Mm. Here. <laughs> Thank you. Good, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Mm. That's yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. That is so delicious. Crispy on the outside. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs>